Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the GRCV Hoops Podcast. My name is Gavin Campbell, and alongside me, my good friend, Ricardo Vargas, and just excited to be here once again. Absolutely. Uh, always always fun to be back in the studio, especially when there's playoff basketball going on, which absolutely it still is more than ever. Um, Most we've, definitely. We've had uh, some pretty good games, so some pretty good series finish up, actually. Uh, a couple surprises, <laughs> to say the least, and one of those one of those first surprises uh, happened in the Western Conference. New Orleans Pelicans swept the Portland Trailblazers, which is definitely something I did not see coming. Um, I, but I definitely thought it was possible after watching the first two games. You know, yeah. If you if you, uh, if you don't have home court advantage, it's very hard to win even one of those games. Very tough. One of the first two games, and they ended up stealing both at Portland. The Pelicans did coming back home, and they just finished it out. Uh, Damon CJ did not look like themselves. From the regular season, um, really don't know what was going on there. You could Yusuf Nurkic could not stop Anthony Davis whatsoever. Uh, Drew Holiday is coming into his own as a as as a superstar player, and Rajon Rondo looks eight years younger. So, I mean, the, the Pelicans look like a team to be you know you, you don't want to mess with them. You don't want to run into them. And you know, after the Golden State Warriors winning their series against the Spurs last night, um, I think that they they should be worried, uh, especially with Steph Curry being out. Oh no, I agree a hundred percent. Yeah, this was this was one of the biggest surprises all year long. Like I, I really wouldn't think the Pelicans were could beat the the Trailblazers, but just how you said, like Drew Holiday, he came into his own, and then Rondo showing his, and like I think Rondo never lost that. It's just because of the opportunities, you know, in Dallas and all that. He's just he's always been good. He hasn't lost a like he's lost a step, but not too much. And then the playoffs, he's just a whole different player. Anthony Davis, amazing performances. Like, I can see, a, like, some similarity between the Pelicans and, like, the this other team that just won a series, the the 76ers. No one expected them to be, like, this good so far, but they seriously do have a chance to, to go far in these playoffs. Absolutely. And uh, just to touch on the Pelicans real quick once again, uh, you, when you're talking about Rajon Rondo, he, he does – I think he's. You, you're right when you say he's always sort of had that because we saw it in Sacramento when he played with the Marcus Cousins, but he never got yeah. the opportunity to be in the playoffs again uh, since well since being in Chicago, and then he got hurt, so we we weren't able to see what he was able to do. A lot of people still think that if Rondo didn't get hurt uh, coming back to Chicago, they would have ended up sweeping Boston. Even as a Celtics fan, I believe that absolutely. So I mean, we know that we know what he's capable of because we've seen it before. But during the regular season, we, we saw stints of it. We saw he had that 25-assist game. Crazy. Uh, That's a New Orleans Pelican uh, re- record, also his uh, career high in assist uh, earlier this year. And that was just, you know, scratching the surface of, of his talent because we know that he still has a handful of years left in this league. And just to be able to see him in the playoffs again, especially with, uh, you know, a once-in-a-generation talent like Anthony Davis, when you pair those guys up, uh, I really wish DeMarcus Cousins was still healthy because I would love to see – uh, you know that double pick and roll action with with Rondo. It would be very, very nice to see along with Drew Holiday. You know, getting more of a, a spot up shooting role. Uh, not to not to that he can't get his own because he did have that forty one point game, which was his incredible uh, playoff career high, uh, which was was very impressive. Not to mention against a, a backcourt such as so dynamic as CJ and, and Damian Lillard. But uh, yeah, very. Very impressed with the Pelicans, and they've they've proved me wrong. They proved a lot of people wrong. I, yeah, they proved. Everybody wrong, like I think, except Pelican fans. Absolutely. And yeah, just like how you said with Rondo, he does have a, a few. Like he has years left because of the way he plays the game. It's not you know, it's not that explosive. So he does have some time left. I and think he'll age very gracefully. The very way his gracefully. Game, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like uh, Andre Miller of sorts. I, I think he's a little bit better than Andre no, Miller. A little, but yeah, yes, yeah, his, his game because that's that's how Andre was able to play so long up, yeah. up until he was forty because he you know he's still one of those true point guards. You know? Yeah, I see Rondo as one of those true point guards. Although he is, he shot the ball really well in that in the series he against did. the Blazers. He did, and um, this is a little off topic, and no disrespect to Andre Miller, but I always remember that. How when he got crossed by Derrick Rose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, oh, man. That's that's that the highlight's never gonna go away. That is so funny. But really really I think an underrated player now that we're on the subject. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. As a as as a whole career. He played he played a very long time and he was he was always re- well respected. Right. You know, well every, everywhere he went, good locker room guy. And you always knew what you were gonna get from him. Con- you know? Yeah, consistent guy. Was never really much of a shooter. 
in his especially in his later career, but he was always a good facilitator of the basketball. Exactly. And going back to the Pelicans, I yeah, I don't want to imagine where they would be if they have like if if DeMarcus Cousins would be on this team. I think with what they showed us so far and then given the circumstances in the West, injuries and whatnot, they could easily not easy, they they, they have a chance to go to the they would have a chance to go to the finals. And they still do right now. Absolutely. I and, and I know that might sound crazy, but after watching that first series Yes, part of the reason that they, the the Blazers lost was their own their own undoing of themselves, right? Uh, CJ he had he had a pretty good game. I think he had close to he either had thirty points or he was really close to it in one game. Damian Lillard he just he was atrocious during the whole series, which is something that we're not accustomed to seeing. No, he's one of the most consistent. The guy never misses a game. And after the All Star break, he was he was playing like an MVP type of player. Absolutely, the the whole Blazers team was was really hot after Nurkic the, as well. Absolutely, and that's why they were able to climb up the Western Conference standings and grab that three seed. And you know, like I can't, um, you can't blame Nurkic too much because it is Anthony Davis. It is. You know, there's only so much you can do. But you know, I would have liked to see more of him. It is. It was sad though that you know, <laughs> there's a, there's a highlight tape of Anthony Davis dunking on Yusuf Nurkic, and they only played four games. <laughs> uh, you know, and that's 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 no disrespect to him because I, I'm I'm a big fan of Yusuf Nurkic. I thought that. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, had had he been healthy for the Golden State series last year, they might have been able to take one or two games yeah, from the Warriors. Sure. But the Warriors again don't have. An Anthony Davis caliber player, nothing close. Nothing close. I mean, no, no disrespect to Draymond Green, but he's he's not a true center, uh, nor does he have the the shooting capabilities of a big man uh, like AD, and he's also not as tall. Not mm-hmm. to mention, I know I'm not even going to mention Zaza in the in the same sentence as Anthony Davis because oh, he's don't disrespect. He is, uh, he's he's a player, and that's that's about all all the good things I can <laughs> say about him. But yeah, Anthony Davis is just a uh, he he is an otherworldly talent in this league. And I don't know if Golden State's going to have an answer for him, especially if Steph doesn't come back, because they're going to have to deal with not only the brow, but they also have Drew Holiday and Rajon Rondo and now Nikola Mirotic to worry Miritich, about. Mirotic, yes. Nikola Mirotic, you know, I know we haven't talked about him yet, but he, he played, I don't want to say out of his mind in that series, but as, he played about as well as you could have asked for. Um, and I think acquiring him from the Chicago Bulls. Great uh, acquisition. Before the, before the trade deadline was one of the best things they could have done. Giving up that... That uh, first round pick was well worth it. I thought at the time it might have been a little too much, but I mean he's he's proven his worth, and I'm I'm really glad that they were able to acquire another perimeter player. Same here, and I like to see uh, Miritich in that situation because I know he wasn't happy in Chicago. Absolutely, especially after the whole situation with Bobby Portis, we knew that one of them exactly. had to go. You know, yeah. Uh, so I'm glad that he was able to find a, a situation in which not only that he's he's comfortable in, but one that he can thrive in. Exactly. No, it all worked out. Um, and moving on to the other series that, that's over, uh, the Pelicans did sweep the Blazers over in the Eastern Conference last night. The, uh, the Philadelphia 76ers uh, beat the Miami Heat in Game 5 to win 4-1. to one. Uh, Nothing short of spectacular have the Sixers been so far, um, especially against the Miami Heat. I know that they're a sixth seed, but this is a team that was... Uh, I don't want to say I don't want to say great, but they were really good during the season. You know, they they had their ups and downs, and they have a lot of solid pieces. You know, and experienced to, pieces. Yeah, absolutely, the guys like Goran Dragic and Dwayne Wade. You know, guys, and not to mention James Johnson as well. Yeah, uh, he's he's more of a, an enforcer player. But you know, Dwayne Wade, Goran Dragic, these guys have been around. Kelly know? Olynyk, you know, for a few years Ab- as well. Absolutely, and uh, but James Johnson has been around as well. But I'm just talking about as far as playoff experience goes. You know, uh, Dragic has, has definitely seen his fair share. Um, and then Dwayne Wade, I mean, three-time <laughs> champion. We know he's getting up there in age, but what more can you say about him? Uh, he had uh, he had one incredible game where they where he pretty much said, "I'm going to win us at least one. We're not we're not getting swept." And I think he scored 27 or 28 points in that game. It was it was like a vintage Dwayne Wade moment. Vintage, yeah, it was nice to see, but it's just I was just impressed with Philadelphia. Absolutely, I knew they were good. I knew they had the talent, but this team is scary. Just how we've previously said in in other episodes, like with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, like I we knew know. we knew what they were capable of. We didn't know that we would see it so soon. So soon, that exactly, you know? yeah, and and. Especially the first two games, I think Philadelphia coming out in game one and setting the tone, I believe we talked about this last week, and just really punching Miami in the mouth. I mean, they came out and said, we're, we're winning this series. I mean, this is it. And you could really tell after game one how it was going to go because they did it without Joel Embiid on the floor. 
And when they got him back for game three, you kind of had the feeling that it was over. You know, my, my, and, and that's no disrespect to Miami, but you, you just got the feeling that it was over because Ben Simmons, he, he has this attitude about him when he plays and while he's on the floor that he's better than you and he doesn't care who you are. It, it wouldn't matter if it was LeBron James or Kevin Durant or whoever was in front of him. He thinks that he's the best player in the world. And you have to have that kind of mindset in the, in the NBA playoffs. Oh, no, for sure. And it's just incredible to see how Ben Simmons just dominates the competition. And he's only a rookie. Right. And it's it's incredible. I think they can go deep in these playoffs. And you can't forget about the role players on that Philadelphia team. J- Shout out to J.J. Redick. Absolutely. J.J. J. Redick was, was absolutely sensational in this series. And uh, you gotta have that. You gotta have that experience. Cause, you know these these young guys are very talented, but you need that playoff experience, that just veteran leadership. Absolutely. And and, and JJ Redick alongside Amir Johnson. Amir Johnson. I yes. think those two guys really help. You know, with the whole uh, veteran leadership situation. Marco Bellinelli. And not to mention him and uh, Ursin Ilyasova. You know, bringing those guys, signing those guys before uh, the the start of the playoffs. I think I think Bellinelli personally has been the biggest acquisition of of any team. Uh, after the trade deadline. And you wouldn't expect that, you know, like, Bellinelli, he's been in the league for quite a while. He played for many teams, Charlotte, San Antonio, Chicago. He's been on many different teams. But this fit with a guy like Ben Simmons, a LeBron-esque player, I honestly, I think Ben Simmons, minus the shooting, is better at what LeBron does as a, as a, a facilitator of the basketball. LeBron James is a scorer, but Ben, ben Simmons is, is not a shooter. You know, inside of five feet, he's really good. Anything outside of that, not so much. Yeah, and it's you like physically, you know, you compare LeBron's rookie year to Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons is much more bigger and like better built. But not to mention, you know, he did have a quote yeah. unquote red shirt year. You yeah, know? yeah. He didn't get to play his his genuine rookie year, which exactly. is another reason why. Just to touch on the rookie of the year subject, I mean, if we're going to give it to a true rookie, I do think that Donovan Mitchell, who we'll talk about later. Uh, him in the Utah Jazz. I think Donovan Mitchell deserves Rookie of the Year because he's a true rookie. And what he's done this year and what he's done in the series against the Oklahoma City Thunder is nothing short of phenomenal. But getting back to uh, Philly and, and Ben Simmons, I, I do think you're right that, that Ben Simmons is just – he is he's just a, a just a one hell of a specimen of a human a being. Specimen. A specimen of a human being. I mean, when, when we look at this guy, I mean, just the way – like you said, the way that he's built, I mean, he's just – He's like a brick, you a know, brick. and he can, the way that he gets and his IQ. And, yeah, exactly. Insane. The, the way that, how quickly he gets up and down the court, uh, his, what he's able to see without even looking, you know, like you said, it just, he's so intelligent that he sees plays happen before they happen with no communication, teammates cutting back screens behind the back passes, no looks. I mean, he does everything for this team. His his passing it's just flat out incredible. And when you have a guy like Joel Embiid, I honestly don't know who's better like between the Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid because Joel Embiid is another incredible player and he's still, you know, they still neither of them have hit their full potential, of course. Right. Them being so young, but it's it's going to be fun to watch these guys for the next few years. And, you know, of course, you can't forget about Markel Fultz. We didn't see too much of him. We didn't see much of him in the series, but you can't forget about him. And I think part of that was I don't think they needed him. No, you know, honestly. We, we, saw him, we saw him in game one. Uh, I think we saw him a little bit more in game two, but the, the last three games, not, they not, didn't really, need him. not really anything from him. Um, but, yeah, I think that they more or less would be rushing him, and I think that's because they realized we're going to get Joel back for game three. We, we're not going to play him as much. We'll get him some rest for the next series. We know that he's he still not might be a hundred percent healthy, uh, but then again, Joel Embiid is not a hundred percent healthy. We know that he's wearing the mask right now yeah. to uh, protect from that uh, the orbital fracture that he got uh, close to the end of the season. But I think even if you're getting you know eighty eighty five percent of Joel Embiid, you're still in good shape. Oh, you're in very good shape, and you know another thing with Markel, you know we we didn't talk about it. You know, youngest player to get a triple double. Absolutely, and, and that, I believe that was in game one, right? <sighs> I think it was during the regular season, but I'm not too sure. I don't remember. No, you're right. It was it was like uh, f- the four or five games left in the regular season. Yeah, that's yeah. I do remember that. That's uh, crazy. Wasn't he? Uh, he's 20, 20. 20 years old, right? Yeah, that's absolutely then, crazy. Lonzo, I set the record earlier this season, and then it got broken the same yeah. season. Yeah, I guess it just all depends on you know what month you were born because they were yeah the same age, if I'm not mistaken. And he goes to show how talented this this class this is. draft class. Yeah, and you know we we go back to it when we were talking about it in the summertime. I mean these guys. This this draft class can go, you know, eight, nine, ten guys deep. I mean, of solid <laughs> yes. players. Yes. You know? 
So, and let's not forget, you know, Ball's teammate Kyle Kuzma. I mean, he's got to be in that top ten. You oh, easy, easy, easy. So, like, you can't leave him out. I mean, and, you know, maybe maybe when it's all said and done, maybe we'll we'll do a segment. We'll look back on it and look at the top ten players from this from this draft class. Maybe that's something to uh, look forward to in the future. That'll be fine. You know who I'm picking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course we do. That guy in Boston who's uh, playing really well, actually, in that series. They what did they won last night? They're up three to two right now in yeah. Milwaukee. Um, and and you know, let's let's touch on that series real quick. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo has has really been disappointing. Not that, not that he's played bad, but he hasn't played great. And it's it's really disappointing to see that from someone that's so talented that you really want to see take the next step and become superstar level talent. But he's never been able to do it in the playoffs. I mean, he had uh, he had the series against the Raptors. Uh, I believe it was last year, and then after that. I mean, this year you expect him to take that next step, and he's honestly, I think he played better against the Raptors than he has right now against the Celtics, and that might be because the Celtics are such a good defensive team. Yeah, that but, that plays a, a role in it. But I mean, I, last year against against Toronto, I mean, you know, he was throwing down like thirty four points, twelve rebounds, six assists, you know. And this series, I just I just saw him score sixteen points. I think it was seven rebounds and like four assists. I'm like, that's. That's not the Greek freak that that we know and love. You know what's what's going on? Because really, I think the player that stood out the most is is Chris Middleton in this series for the Bucks, and it's not just because he had that, that crazy game tying shot in uh, in game one. He's actually been playing really well consistently, uh, over twenty points a game. You know he's hitting clutch shot after clutch shot for Milwaukee just to keep them in it in, in the series. Yeah, he's he's been a he's played solid in the series. Like him and Giannis have been the like the two guys that have kept them in them because the other night Malcolm Bro- like last night Mal- Malcolm Brogdon just had two points right you know another guy you know Shabazz he's been doing a little scoring Jabari but nothing too crazy from I, these other guys I think that I think that they need to give a few more minutes to Shabazz Muhammad just because I think it, when he gets going he can score he can and you do need that you know absolutely Thon Maker's really been a no show after you know what we talked about him earlier in the season he's really just kind of fallen off instead stagnant if not you know going through a a slump, really. I a mean, slump, just haven't yeah. really heard anything from him. Tony Snell, I feel like he needs to pick it up. He's he's a really good he's a really good uh, perimeter player. He's a really good defender, really good three and D guy. And I, I feel like if they can get him going, then they'll be all right. I would like to see some more minutes from Jason Terry. There's been a couple games this series that he hasn't even played in, and he's I, I know that he's he's getting up there in age, but I mean he's he's been to the playoffs. He's won a, a title. And you with know, that shooting, you know, he, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you can shoot that thing, absolutely. you're in the NBA. We've seen Ray Allen do it time after time. And Jason Terry is no different. I mean, he's one he's of the best of all time. Top shooting. five in three points, three pointers made for a reason. Exactly. Okay. So I would like to see more minutes from him. And not to mention, shout out to Jabari Parker. He's been playing great. Yeah. He's been, he's I'm been, happy he's been to playing see that. really well. And that's after, you know, I, we, had, we had criticized him for really towards the end of the regular season. Being subpar, subpar, you know, especially yeah. especially coming off those uh, double ACL injuries, you know, back to back, but he's starting to turn it around. I just feel like this Milwaukee team needs to be, I don't know, more more motivated. Which I don't know how you can get more motivated than being down three two in a series. You know, your, your game six is going to be in Milwaukee. Uh, I believe it's tomorrow night. Yeah, and then you know if you can force game seven, there's always a chance. No, right. exactly. And speaking of that motivation, I would you would think that Eric Bledsoe would have some after Absolutely. you know getting getting into it with uh, Terry Rozier. Yeah, yeah. So like you know, it, for me, Eric Bledsoe, he's the X factor. If he can play well, you know, the Bucks are winning this series, but he hasn't showed up. And I think I think the Celtics are going to take the series. Yeah, we we thought that we thought that you know after coming over from Phoenix, we thought that the Bucks may. A you solid. Know, he'll duo. be the second, maybe third option. At, if Eric Bledsoe's your third option, you think this team would be a hell of a lot better than they are. Yeah, like yeah. where's that old Eric Bledsoe? That twenty-five and five type of guy. Yeah, the, the, you know the mini LeBron. You know that was the, everyone was calling him when he was in L.A. Yeah, you know, we we just we haven't seen that since. You know Isaiah Thomas, Eric Bledsoe, and Goran Dragic were all on the same team. You know it seems like we were talking about how good Eric Bledsoe is. Yeah, it's sad to see because he's still you know. He's not old. No, he's not old. I think he's 27 right now. I mean, he's yeah. he's in his prime right now, you know. And if he can stay in Milwaukee, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see if they could if they could keep Bledsoe in Milwaukee with with Giannis and Middleton. I think that's a good core. It is. I think a very good core. With with Jabari as well. I think that they're one piece away. One piece away. I think they need to get Giannis a co-star. And no disrespect to Bledsoe or Middleton, they're just they're not star they're not players. star players yet, no. but they're really good players. Really really good players. Guys you want to have on that team like 
you know, Clay Thompson All Star, but that type of that type of player, like a right. Clay Thompson. Like Clay, Clay Thompson, he's a, he's an All Star, but he's he's like a really 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 good role player. That's yeah. that's what he is. And there's no disrespect to Clay no Thompson. Disrespect. Yeah, he's exactly. the best role player you could have on your team because yeah. he's he's one of the he's one of the best shooters this league has ever seen. But when you you don't don't ask him to handle the basketball. Don't ask him to defend the other team's best player. You know he's a really 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 good role player. And nothing wrong with that, you know. No, like, absolutely not. If, if if someone told me that, hey, dude, you're the best role player in the entire league, I'm, that's an that's an accomplishment. I'll be happy. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's that's a compliment. It's it's very, it's a very prestigious title to have. You know, exactly because it's it's a team sport. It's not all about just being the best player. It's absolutely, about making a positive impact on your team. Absolutely, because there's people that make the argument that Clay Thompson is the the worst of the big four that they have in Golden State. Obviously, it's Steph and KD, and you can argue who's better. And then you have Draymond Green, who has been Defensive Player of the Year, which some people say that criteria puts him above Clay Thompson, so he's number four. And if, if you're okay with that, then you're okay. There's nothing wrong with being the fourth best player on a championship Correct. team. Exactly. You're, he was an all-star. There's nothing wrong with that. Just think, without him, they might not win. Absolutely. And and that's, well, they, well, they, they might they might have still won. I mean, they did win in five games. but Even, like, before KD came. Yes. They, they, they don't no, win. No, no. Without they Clay Thompson, win. they don't win. <laughs> without Clay Thompson, they don't win. No, absolutely not. Um, and that's that's another thing. You know, if we go back and look at that series, I mean, if, if Kyrie doesn't get hurt, if Kevin Love doesn't get hurt, they might have just won their first ring this past year. <laughs> you know, we, we don't know. Because uh, Le- LeBron and Kyrie came back, uh, the 3-1 deficit in the finals from two years ago. And then the one before that, Kyrie gets hurt in game one. Kevin Love got hurt in the first uh, first series rough. against Boston. And LeBron still took it six games. You know, he can't turn back the clock, but if, if you – even if you just give him one – if you give him Kevin Love or Kyrie, I think we could be talking about a different story. But that's a what if. Yeah. You know. One of the biggest what ifs in recent memory. Right. Uh, I think I think the one right after that, you know, we always come back to it, that Derrick Rose, man. If Derrick Rose hadn't got hurt, I think about it almost every day. <laughs> almost every day. Honestly. And he did he did have a really he, good game. You know, let's let's go to that series real quick. The Houston, just hop on that one. Houston and uh in Minnesota, uh Houston leads three to one in the series. But Derrick Rose, uh in game three, when when they were down two oh, uh they came back to Minnesota for their first home playoff game in fourteen years. Crazy. And Derrick Rose he looked like vintage Derrick Rose that night. Uh, I think he had 17 points and three assists or s- uh, something like that. He would, yeah, uh, like s- 17, seven, and then three or four. Yeah, or he had like a that. really, really good game, uh, and it was it was just really nice to see uh, him and I like it was really nice to see him and Jimmy Butler uh, going back and forth again. You know, we remember his days in Chicago pre injury. Nice. That was that was just awesome to see. Uh, I think one of the highlights that I saw was uh, Derrick Rose driving and then kicking it out to Butler in the corner for a three. Uh, the crowd went nuts. The crowd yeah. went nuts, you know. What a story. Imagine being in the arena that in that moment. That must have been nice. Yeah, and, and there's one thing that I can say about this series is that that, uh, that game two when James Harden went like two of 18, terrible shooting night, less than 20%, right? If if And then Chris Paul came back with, I think, 25 or 27 points, something like that. He, he had a really good game two because – Game one, he played awful. I mean, yeah. absolutely abysmal. And then uh, James Harden and Clint Capella picked that up. And game two, Clint Capella still played well, but James Harden was absolutely atrocious in that game. Chris Paul picked it up. Now, I don't know what happened in game three to to make the Wolves understand. Maybe, maybe it was being at home. Maybe it was being caught up in the moment. You know, But whatever whatever energy that they had, they need to bring that in game five or they're going home. They're going home, and I mean that's that's it. Okay, Carl Anthony Towns is averaging less than ten points a game for this series so far, and he's arguably their best player. I think arguably. I think he I think he is their best player at least yeah. during the regular season. I mean, if you're going to tell me he averaged twenty three and twelve, he is their he's their best player. No, yeah, he is he their can't, best player. He cannot he cannot keep this up. He just cannot he cannot expect Jimmy Butler, especially Andrew Wiggins, and no no disrespect to Andrew Wiggins, but he. He's he's more of a of a complimentary scorer, right? He doesn't really play defense. He's really athletic. That, that's athletic. that's his best quality. Okay, he's really athletic, and his his game isn't going to age very well. But he's he's really athletic. He's a decent shooter, but when he's not scoring, he's not giving you much else. So Carl Anthony Towns, being the de- the defensive anchor that he is, being able to hit three pointers as a big man consistently, and then scoring the basketball, especially in the post, he has really great footwork. He, you know. I, if if he does not have a big game five, 
and force it to go home in Minnesota for game six, there's no way that there's there's just no way that, that the Timberwolves can have any hope. And it's it's sad to see them go out because, you know, they have their their young team, a bright future, but it's just exactly just how you said, like Carl Towns has to have a big game. And, and you know, it is tough against the Rockets, you know, Capella, a great defensive player, and then you know, you gotta worry about Harden, Chris Paul, and all those those three pointers, but I, I do hope they they win this one, the Timberwolves. Yeah, well, I mean, nice. not to mention that Chris Paul is a, is a really good defender. So I mean, putting him on Jeff Teague or Jimmy Butler is a really, really good idea. Yeah, and you got guys off the bench like PJ Tucker. You know, I really PJ. wish I really wish they hadn't uh, traded away Patrick Beverly. I feel like they're missing him off the bench, and there's no disrespect to you know guys like Eric Gordon or uh, PJ Tucker, Trevor Ariza, Ryan mm-hmm. Anderson, uh, those guys. But then they. Yeah, Nene, it, it, and you know Nene, I, I still like him. I still like his game. It's nice. It's it's. I think he's a good. Uh, he, he's still got high energy for being a, a veteran. You know, uh, any, anytime you can get a couple dunks out of him, you know he's he's done a really good job for the night. Um, I, I wouldn't mind him being you know my eighth or ninth man on my bench. <laughs> he's he's more than welcome. <laughs> yeah, no, um, exactly. But I think, yeah, I do I do think Houston's going to close it out unless unless Carl Towns can you know have a, a 28, 32 point game. I think, Which could happen. I think it's I think they're going to be done. And that's not to say that Jimmy Butler can't do it, but I just – Jimmy Butler's been playing so well consistently throughout these four games that I think it, he, he just doesn't have another 30-something point night in him. I think it's going to come down to Cat having a good game. And if he doesn't, then they're going to go home. Yep, I have to agree. And it's tough because, you know, this is uh, Carl Towns' first playoff experience, his first experience right. in the playoffs. And I think we have to remember that. You know, it's his third year, but it's still only his first time in the playoffs. Yeah, and it's crazy because this – he should be a senior in college right now. Yeah, and you know, if if anything, the Timberwolves season has been an accomplishment, especially for using for losing Jimmy Butler for a couple months, you know, rehabbing that uh, that knee. So, I mean, hey, they made the playoffs. You got a game off a of number one seed that, in the conference. You got to be happy with that. So, if if anything, if anything, uh, they, they've they've done that so far, and you know, yeah, they've got to be happy. Yeah, imagine if like Derrick Rose has thir- twenty five points, ten assists. If, if Derrick Rose has another good night, he might get paid. Someone someone might take a shot on him this summer. He might get paid. I would like to see him stay in Minnesota, though. I would like that, too. It'd be nice to see him, Jimmy, Thibodeau. And let's not forget Taj. Taj, Taj yeah, Gibson. Taj. And, you know, Taj Gibson had a really good had a really good uh, uh, game game three when uh, Derrick Rose was going off as well. Um, I think uh, the defensive end, he's not going to be able to do it all. I think Gorgie Jang needs to step up on the defensive end. I know that they gave him that they give him quality minutes. But he needs to he needs to step up a little bit more, especially when Cat is out. Um, I think that they'll. I know they're not going to stop the three ball, but you can't have James Harden and Chris Paul just driving whenever they want. Whenever they want, drawing you know. fouls. And like for me, Gordy Jane, like at least a few years ago, he was like a a starting type of center. Yeah, he I, could give you a double double. He's definitely serviceable. I mean, he's he's a guy that I think a an average team would start at center and they'd be okay. Yeah, you know. But if 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 he's your backup, then you should be in good shape. You should, yeah, exactly. Sure. But getting on to, uh, I think I think probably our favorite playoff series, uh, the Utah Jazz, Oklahoma City Thunder. The Jazz won. Was it last night or two days ago? I get the game. Two days ago. Up. Two days ago they won. Uh, they're they're leading the Thunder three to one in the series. Um, definitely something I didn't see coming. Uh, mostly mostly due to Russell Westbrook though. I'm, I'm you know and I, and I hate to do that because I love Russ. I love his motor. I love the way he plays the game. So much passion. Yeah. Yeah, he does. But you know, when when you after game two, or I'm sorry, was it game? No, game three. No, game. two. Was it game <laughs> two? He's, he he talked about Ricky Rubio. Ricky Rubio had a great game. Then they went to Utah. I, I think it might remember. be three. It might have been game three. It might be three. It might, yeah, yeah, it was game, 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 three, three. game three. Game three. After after Ricky Rubio had a great night, uh, he went to the press and said, "I'm going to shut him down," and he just. That that like took over his entire mindset. You know, it's almost like he forgot how to play basketball. He was so obsessed with stopping Ricky Rubio, and he still ended up scoring like sixteen points. Yeah. So it's like, what good did it do you to lose the game? I mean, honestly, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me with with a guy that's as talented as Westbrook is. You know, let that cloud your vision. You know, and they got away from what they were doing in game one. What won them game one was Russ moving the basketball, and they're getting assist. The Thunder had ten assists in game four. Ten as a team, as a, yeah, you ten assists. I, I I just don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. That's that's just say it. Basketball is a team sport. If you're averaging you know less than three assists per quarter, what what should that? And that's as a whole unit. 
As a not, whole, not even as a player, as a whole unit. And it's just sad to see because you know, Russell Westbrook, he's an incredible, like he's he's such a good player. But I don't know, there's like something about him that doesn't allow for like for for team success. Yeah, and it, it's really sad because we've seen it with Kevin Durant, we've seen it with Oladipo, and now we're seeing it with Paul George and Carmelo Anthony. Uh, it, it just it, it doesn't add up to me. Yes, Melo's not the shooter that he used to be, but it's not all his fault. And if you put Melo on the Celtics. He's a different player. Yeah, no, they they make him a spot up shooter. You know, I mean, yeah, or on he, he the Spurs, still, he'd, he would still take a couple isolation plays. But the Spurs, speaking of the Spurs, Rudy Gay does that from time to time. You know, and he, he's he's been a scorer his entire career. So, and we know that Carmelo Anthony Anthony's better than Rudy Gay. Oh yeah. So I mean, it, it's like I just don't understand. Honestly, I think I think some of it has to be blamed on Billy Donovan, their head coach, not being able to utilize the talent that's been given to you. Because you could do a lot with that team. And you can't forget about Steven Adams. No, Steven Adams is, I think he has become a top five big man in this league after getting paid. Easily. I, I think so. Uh, Easily. He's, he's got he's to be, in my mind, he's number four that I can think of right now, if not number five. Okay. Oh, so, hold on, champ. I mean, I, I, I got I to gotta put him up there. I mean, if I have, if, if I have uh, you know, Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins, Carl Anthony Towns, Hassan Whiteside. I see. I don't. Al Horford. I don't think. I don't think Hassan Whiteside and Al Horford are better than Stephen Adams. Oh, definitely Al Horford, champ. I, I, don't, definitely think so. Al Ho- I don't think so. I don't think so. I would rather have Stephen Adams on my team than Al Horford. And, I, and that's no disrespect to Big Al. I like Al a lot. I think he's a top ten center. I think Al is a better passer, of course. Oh, better I'll give scorer. You that. And they're, yeah. they're probably tired of rebounding. Oh, no. No. Steven Adams is a lot better rebounder. Okay, he okay. lets Russell Westbrook get, so, get okay. those rebounds. Okay, Steven Adams is a better rebounder. But other than that, like... A better enforcer as well. I think he sets a hell of a lot harder screen than Al Horford Oh, no. Those, those those screens are pretty crazy. He's, he's a Neanderthal. But, <laughs> I mean, if you run into him, it's, it's, it's like running into a brick wall. No. Like, no, no, He's no. the Amazon version of Shaquille O'Neal. I'm, I'm serious. I'm dead serious. You laugh. I'm dead serious. I love Steven Adams. Give me Stephen Adams. I love Stephen Adams as well, but he is nowhere. That is that is your Homer bias. No, talking. no, no. That is your Homer <laughs> bias talk. This just facts, man. Then, then, Homer has been at. Then I would say, star. you did you want me to say that Jonas Valanciunas is better than Stephen Adams? He is. No, he's not. He is. No, he's not. <laughs> Maybe in these playoffs, he's had two really good games. Okay. Yeah, I think he had a one game with 19 points and 15 rebounds. Miles was really Turner. good. Miles Turner is be- better than both of them. Better on the offensive end. Better on the no, no, yes. no, no, not on the defense. Not yes. on the defensive end. O- overall player, Miles Turner. Stephen Adams is the ones. fifth best center in this league. I, I'm gonna say Mark Gasol. No, not now. No. Not now. <laughs> not now. Not now. No. Mark Gasol is a top, one of the best big men. Yes, he in has been. Not anymore. He still is. Where's his team, Rick? Okay, you can't blame that on. Look at it. Look at who he has. I can't. Really, really. One you're, of the Harrison twins. You're, <laughs> <laughs> you're so, so you're gonna sit there and tell me? You're going to sit there and tell me that Mark Gasol is so good that he can't even muster up thirty wins for his team? Okay, not by himself, man. Mike Conley played half the season. Tyreek Evans had to, had a career year. Yes, I said Tyreek Evans, but he had a career year. <laughs> No man, like you, you know how consistent the Grizzlies have been. Come on, man, they got Chandler, they got Chandler Parsons. <laughs> <laughs> Clint Capella's better than Stephen Adams. Yes, yes, that's why I said Stephen Adams is the fifth best center. Demarcus Cousins, Anthony Davis when he plays center, Carl Anthony Towns, Clint Capella, and then Stephen Adams is the fifth um, best center. No, no, no. I'm yes. sorry, I have to disagree. But yes, he should have made the All Star game. No. <laughs> Stephen Adams should have made the All Star game. Andre Drummond. Andre Drummond's he's better. Not, no, he's not. No, he's not. Where's his, <laughs> where, where's his team? Where is his team? Okay. You, even, even when Russ had those scrubs last year with Steven Adams, where were they at? They were the fifth or the sixth seed in the Western Conference with the fifth best center in the game. This is the last thing I'm saying. Greg Monroe is even better than Steven Adams. Go home. Go home, Rick. Triple double. When has Steven Adams ever had a triple double? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be kidding me! You're you're basing Greg Monroe being better than Stephen Adams on a triple double, <laughs> on on his first career triple double. In the Brad Stevens offense, that's not fair. Put Stephen Adams in a Brad Stevens offense, he'd average thirty a game. No, no, no! Like Stephen Adams is a great, great center, but definitely not, not even. 
Are you going to say he's not top 10? <laughs> Tell me he's not top 10. I'll walk out right he's now. Probably, you know, like, he's top 10, but I can name you six better centers. They, name me 10 centers better than Steven Adams right now. 10? 10, okay, right now. No, I can't name 10. That's, okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay, we can agree to disagree, all right? I yeah. think he's number five. You probably think he's number eight or nine. That's eight or fine. Nine. That's I, fine. No, I love his game and his, he, he, his attitude. He's a, he's a nice guy. Are you are you jealous of that hair? Is that what it is? <laughs> I wish I did have that hair. Yeah, that's, uh, he's got a nice set of hair. And that, and that build. Like, imagine that. Oh, he's seven foot one. I mean, yeah. I, would, I wouldn't fight him. No. I mean, <laughs> no I'm not even, going to. I, I wouldn't get him mad at all. All right, anyway, get, getting, getting back to the Thunder. Rudy Gobert. Come on, champ. On the defensive end, not offensively. All right, Steven just, Adams is better offensively than Rudy Gobert. Let's just keep it going. This is crazy. Am I wrong? Porzingis. Porzingis is a power forward. But you can put him on center. He's a power forward. And you know what? I'm taking Anthony Davis off my list. He's a power forward. So, so uh, Steven Adams is number four. <laughs> He's the fourth best center in the game. Give me Steven Adams. I'll take Steven Adams over Rudy Gobert. Oh. I'll take Steven Adams over Andre Drummond. Over DeAndre Jordan. I forgot about DeAndre Jordan. I'll take him over DJ. I'll take him over DJ. I don't know. I DJ can't shoot at all. At least Steven Adams can make free throws. I don't even like DeAndre Jordan that much. Why? He's a nice guy, man. No, he's not. Like, I just don't like him as I a player. I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> I just, as a player, I don't like him that much. I'll say, that's a funny dude. Yeah, he Have you is, seen him yeah. in them State Farm commercials? Yeah, yeah. No, he's funny. funny nice, nice attitude. But just as a player, I'm not a fan. We've been robbed. <laughs> <laughs> he's a funny guy. I, I love that commercial. He's like, my rings are gone. Yeah. And uh, what was it? Is it Kevin Garnett? Kevin Garnett. Yeah, Kevin Garnett was uh, was grandpa, and then Chris Paul said, "You ain't got no rings." <laughs> I love how he was in on the joke, you know, because he don't have a ring either. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I, was, I just say that because the commercial it was really funny. Is it? Yeah, I was, that's one of the best commercials. I, yeah, those State Farm commercials. And now he's got him and James Harden, and uh, who was it? Trevor Ariza. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good ones. And then when Lillard. Uh, yeah, Baby Dame. Yeah, and uh, I got that. They got that one where they're playing charades. I think Clyde Drexler's Drexler's in that one. As a, uh, no, Chris no. Paul, James Harden, and uh, Clyde Drexler. I'm pretty sure. Hmm. I could be wrong though. It looks like Clyde. He did. He did play for the Rockets Clyde. at one point. Yeah, he did. So one of the best of all time. Yeah, I love that guy. Um, <laughs> I really do. No, Clyde the Glide was awesome, man. I love watching his highlights. Um, just you know, Jordan was better, and I, <laughs> that sucks. But <laughs> Jordan was. Could you imagine they almost played on the same team? That that would have been wild. If they don't draft Sam Bowie or Sam Bowie, however you say his name, you know, and and sorry that he got injured, but. Stuff happens. It's a Greg Oden story all over again. Yeah. Uh, you know, they could have had Michael Jordan. They could have had Kevin Durant. I think Blazers just have bad draft luck. They could have had Larry Bird. They, Tony, bad draft luck, man. That's all it is. That's terrible. Jeez. All right. Well, getting back getting back to the series, yeah. In short, U- Utah is going to win this series, okay? Well, Russell Westbrook is costing his team. Um, as long as he continues to, to have this kind of mindset and really just kind of screw everything over for his teammates because in that first game, Paul George had 30, 39 points, mm-hmm. I believe. You know, he passed the ball. I think Westbrook had like 12 assists, maybe 14. I can't remember. And like Jazz, but, the Jazz have all the momentum now. Oh, Donovan Mitchell is an absolute animal. He has established himself as probably a top 50 player in this league, at least. Maybe not top 25, but he is definitely a top 50 player top in this league easy, right now. Easy, easy, and he's, easy. He is, he's absolutely incredible. Maybe not next year, but the year after that, I could definitely see him making the All-Star game, only because he's in the in the Western Conference. Yeah, if he were yeah. in the East, he would make it next year. Yeah, oh, absolutely. He, he would have made it. This year, I think. Well, maybe not because he did play his best ball after the All Star break. That is true. But if we were judging it right now, I mean, he would definitely have a spot. But you that's know, that's, that's, that's crazy. That's neither here nor there. I mean, he's playing great. Ricky Rubio is playing really good. Joe, really, Joe really Ingles. good. Joe, Joe. Ingles. I tell you what's funny as hell is watching Joe Ingles and Paul George go back and forth at each other on the court. <laughs> Nothing is funnier. Mostly because Paul George, you don't really see him jawing that often with a lot no. of people. And then Joe Ingles just looks goofy. <laughs> you know? I saw on YouTube someone say he looks like a substitute teacher. <laughs> <laughs> substitute teacher during the week. NBA uh, NBA playoff starter during the weekend. He looks funny, but he's he's a great player. Great he really player. is. I mean, I'm pretty sure at one point he was shooting 40% from three this year. Yeah, he That's has a no sniper. easy task. He and has a sniper. It's really cool because he's left-handed. Yeah, it is. You know, it's, it's uh, like I said, man, I think the only left-handed person I really know is James Harden. And so now I know J- J- uh, Joe Ingles is left-handed. It's so nice. It's, it's pretty cool to see. And that jazz crowd, they just Woo. even got Mitt Romney talking trash. Yeah, <laughs> talking trash to Russell Westbrook. Man. Jeez. Yeah. What a that guy. That was funny. I, I feel like he could have wore something else under that jersey instead yeah. of a, yeah. a dress shirt. You know, like, <laughs> come on, man. What are you doing? 
Stick to politics. <laughs> anyway. And maybe not even. Yeah. The, <laughs> the Jazz. The Jazz are coming. Uh, they're, they're, they're coming out of this. They're going to play the Rockets in the next series. They're hot like a pistol. Yeah. they're it, it, It's going to be over. They're going to go to OKC. I don't even care that the Thunder are at home. They're still going to lose by double digits. I'm, I'm calling it right now. I'm calling it right now. Unless I said it. I said this before the show. If Russell Westbrook can shoot less than 12 shots in this game, they'll win. If he shoots less than 12 shots, they can win. But it, it's when when he gets selfish and starts chucking up bricks and shoots twenty six percent, he's not gonna. You're not gonna win that way. It's terrible, and don't be surprised if the Jazz take take at least a game from the Rockets. I think they might take more than that. At I least mean, a I game. mean, really, if if Mitchell Mitchell's averaging almost thirty points a game in this so, series as a rookie, if he if he can do that against Houston, I mean, I know Houston's got a really good defense, but if they're missing threes, Mitchell's gonna get his. I mean, if they double team Mitchell. What are they gonna do? They're gonna give it to Rubio. They're gonna give it to Gobert. They're gonna give Ingles. it to uh, Ingles and Crowder. I mean, they they have a bunch of solid role players. I mean, I understand they don't have Roddy Hood anymore. I wish they did. Then again, he's not playing as well either for the Cavs. And speaking of that, I want to move over to that series because all all of the games except for Game One have been really close. I mean, really close. Like decided Very close. decided by five or less points, and we're still somehow tied at two two. So. The Pacers or the Cavs could have very well swept each other, but easily. Actually, no, the Pacers would have swept. I think the Cavs could have won in could win in five if it wasn't tied up right now. But um, I think uh, I think this series has probably been the most fun to watch, mostly because of I uh, go back to it, Lance Stevenson. Lance Stevenson, yeah. Lance Stevenson's a funny guy, you know. And, and I tell you what, no he one knows no one knows how to get under his skin under LeBron James' skin more than Lance. And he, what, what's really surprising is everyone's saying that he's he's being dirty about it, but he only has one technical foul in these four. These four games. Yeah, no, it's just a psychological game with him, and it's it's fun to see. It's fun to see. Yeah, and I think that it, it comes down to, you know, is he being fair? Yeah. I mean, if they're, if they're not going to call a foul on him. Then, yeah. I think it's fair game, you know. And not to mention that, uh, really, the Indiana Pacers have been hit and miss because of Victor Oladipo. If he has a really good game, they probably win. If they don't, they're not going to win. And even even with that, it's been really close either way. So e- either way, so even if Victor's on, LeBron is on is, is what it's been, you know. And, and yeah, he's gotten some contribution finally from uh, Jordan Clarkson off the bench. Finally decided to show up in the series. But other than that, like he hasn't been getting like com- compared to the Pacers. No. Well, you have multiple guys scoring in double digits. Yeah, Kevin Love has been. He needs to. He needs to show up. That's that's been really disappointing. LeBron, it's sad. LeBron needs some help. I mean, Kyrie's gone, and we thought Kevin could step into that second option. And he has been, you know, he's he was really good during the regular season for for long stretches, but he's been hurt a couple times, you know. So maybe that's got something to do with it. I mean, he did have a hand injury. Maybe you know it's coming off uh, differently on his release. I mean, we're really not sure what's going on, but he needs to pick it up if the Cavs have a chance because LeBron's not going to be able to piggyback all that these guys. Team. Yeah, no. For two of these next three games, it's just not going to happen. It, it's not going to happen, and it's crazy to think like before the season started, they. Would, we thought this was going to be a crazy team with Wade, Rose, yeah. Isaiah Thomas. I think all of us got fooled by, you know, looking at it with rose tinted glasses. Yeah. You know, I was thinking that these guys were, you know, four years younger than they are, and it's just not going to happen anymore. And look look where we're at now. And, like, the only consistent piece has been LeBron James on that team. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's going to be a really good game. They actually play tonight, so I'm looking forward to uh, – I think whoever wins tonight is going to win the series. So it's it's, it's definitely going to be interesting. And uh, they're, the Pacers – uh, are at home, so I mean they got a chance. They do have a chance. They got a, a chance. LeBron chance. James has never lost a first round playoff series. They got a chance tonight to do it. That that would be something. So uh, hopefully Victor Oladipo shows up. Uh, Sabonis Sabonis played uh, really well in Game Four, as well as uh, Miles Turner. I don't think that they'll play that well again, but if they can get contributions from him, I think they'll be in good shape. And hopefully Lance can do his thing. You know, yeah. LeBron's going to do his thing. Kevin Love needs to show up. Jordan Clarkson's going to need to. Uh, to get some scoring in off the bench. Hopefully they can get somebody in there like Nance Jr. or Nance uh, him out to have you know, a Jeff, Jeff or Green, if he could please show up. Someone get an APB out for Jeff Green. He's been he's been gone the entire series. I think he's averaging like three points a game, if that. He's he averaged eight for the for the regular season. Now he's they can't even get half that. Now, that's just it's just sad. The the Cavs just even if they win this series, I don't think they're gonna they're definitely not gonna win the finals. Kyle Korver played really well yesterday too. I don't think that he'll do that again. Maybe J.R. Smith will have a crazy game. You know, hit four or five, six threes. We'll have to see. That could always happen. Yeah. Yeah. J.R. J.R. can always get hot. Just don't know when it's gonna happen. <laughs> so, they need him to get hot tonight. Um, I'm yeah. like a cannon. We'll see. We'll see. Moving on uh, to the last Eastern Conference series, my team, <laughs> the Toronto Raptors versus the Washington Wizards is tonight, Game Five. 
Wizards actually stormed back those uh, when they went to Washington for games three and four. Was not expecting that. No. Nope. Um, <laughs> was not expecting that. I can tell you right now as a fan, I was not expecting that. I was like, all right, they can get one. And then when they tied it back up, I was like, well. <laughs> I was not, oh, man. was not expecting it. But um, I tell you, funny today. I tell, hey, I tell you what I do expect is the Raptors are going to blow the Wizards off the floor tonight. They I'll, will. I'll guarantee it. And even, even if it comes down to game seven, which I don't think it will, but – when they go back to Washington for Game Six, they'll they'll close it out this weekend. I guarantee that. Um, I don't know who's going to go off. I don't know if it's going to be a team contribution, but I know that Fred Van Fleet Fred. might play tonight. I Fred. hope he does. I hope he does. Freddie, we need him. We need him because Kyle Lowry uh, touched on it after the Game Four loss to the Wizards. That's that's why I'm not worried. Let me tell let me tell you this, okay? Kyle Lowry in his post game interview in the locker room. You know how some players, you know, if you're the number one seed and you're tied up two two with the eight seed. You might get nervous. Yeah. You, know, you might seem a little on edge. Lowry was the most relaxed I've ever seen him in my life. He, he was just back there, you just know, just, just chilling, shoulders yeah, yeah. slumped, you know, just answering questions, all smiles. Now that he had the office. It's all going to be good, fellas. Don't worry. No, that's good. And that's – And I, I, tell you, I tell you what, when he's got that kind of confidence, I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he messed around and got 20 and 10 in this game. You know, DeMar could, you know, get 28, 30 points. You know, JV, Ibaka, anyone could really have a good game. I'm just I'm just telling you right now, don't be surprised if the Raptors win by 15, 20 points tonight. I could see that happening. That's that's all I'm going to say. Jurassic Park's going to be going nuts. Air Canada Center's going to yeah, be rocking. Sure. And we're going to be going up 3-2. to two. I'm letting you know right now. I would like to see that, honestly. So, uh, And there's no disrespect. John Wall and Bradley Beal played out of their minds those two games. I'm really impressed with John Wall especially. Yeah, that, that's good to see him playing well. That, yeah. you know, After bouncing back from, from those first couple games where he played absolutely, especially Bradley Beal in, in, in game oh one, my goodness. was abysmal. But he's bouncing back. I'm, I'm happy to see him as a fan come back. Yeah. But if they want to have a couple more bad games, I'm very okay with that because we need to hurry up and move on. So yeah, get, get some rest. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully get ready for the Pacers and not LeBron. I don't want to play LeBron. <laughs> that would be a good series, Pacers Raptors. Yeah, I would love to see that um, again. Maybe even uh, Raptors in seven. I, honestly, I, I might, I might have to pull out some money and go to one of those games if uh, if the Pacers end up winning because I would like to see a, a playoff game. That'd be nice. But uh, anyway, moving on to the Western Conference, we got another one that we need to to finish up with: Golden State Warriors, San Antonio Spurs. I know we touched on it earlier. The Warriors. Yeah, it really wasn't a challenge. I mean, what a challenge! You know, game four, the Spurs came out at home, last ditch effort just to not get swept. Uh, Manu played well, uh, Tony Parker not so well. Lamarcus Aldridge had a good game. I think he had 19 points in that game. And um, rest in peace to Greg Popovich's abs- wife. That's absolutely uh, the loss of his wife. And, very uh, sad. We know that he wasn't there for the last two games because of that. Uh, Understandable. But uh, you know, yeah. Best uh, wishes to him and his family. And yeah, but with. Basketball wise, we knew this wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, it, you know, and, and I, I, I called it. I said that we think we both did that. You know, the Spurs would come together. They'd pull one. They pull, they'd pull one, one yeah. game. But I, that that leads us to you know our first second round series that we know for sure. You know, coming back to it, New Orleans, Golden State. If Steph Curry is not going to be there for the first couple games, maybe not the whole series. This could go either way. It can go either way. Yes. And I can't believe we're saying that about a team that has Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green on it. But the way Anthony Davis and company played in that first series against Portland, like we said, Portland it was partially Portland's fault, but it was partially New Orleans taking advantage of the situation and elevating their game. You yeah. know, when you have that kind of confidence, be like, we haven't even lost yet. Like, we swept them. You know, if, if you can come in and go up against the defending champions, especially Anthony Davis, this is what we've been waiting for, is a challenge like this to see how well the brow can be. You know, and, and and we know that he lost to the Warriors three years ago in the first round, but this is completely different. And if they can take game one, if the Pelicans can win that first game, they will have so much momentum. So much, because even if Golden State ties it up, I mean, Smoothie King Center is going to be, they're going to be rocking the house. They're going to put those Warriors in a blender. <laughs> they, they love it. They love it. They love it. And even even if Golden State gets one there, I mean, if, it, if it's tied 2-2 going back to Golden State and they still don't have Steph Curry, I'm still not putting it past Pelicans in seven. I yeah. mean, it, it, it could very well happen. I mean, don't put it outside the realm of possibility. Yeah, it's not a surprise that, that that series will go to seven games. I don't know which way it will go, but it can go to seven games. It absolutely can. It absolutely can. And I'm, I tell you what, I'm really looking forward to these four games tonight. Same um, here. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast to watch. I think it's gonna be the last time we actually have four games on uh, in one day. So uh, huh. you know, 
soak up that information and soak up that uh, <laughs> NBA playoff basketball while you can. <laughs> Most definitely. But, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for us here. Uh, we really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. As always, we enjoy doing it for you. And, uh, you know. Yeah, I always we'll- have a blast. And don't forget to check us out on Spotify, TuneIn Radio, iTunes, Play Store. Absolutely. Check us out anywhere uh, and everywhere, anytime you can. We really appreciate you guys listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.